EB, are you concerned that Terry McLaurin has only eight catches for 39 yards mm -hmm. for a 4.9 yard average through two games? Is that I, concerning to you? I mean, it's not concerning. I just think it's weird that that's how they're deciding to utilize him right, right. now. Um, I did see – now, again, this is just – me casually it seemed like they moved around was it he wasn't always in the left spot you know mm -hmm. for every snap like it's been the criticism early on um but it is strange that you know they're not targeting more downfield right that 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 is strange to me yes and no i mean there really hasn't been much of a downfield passing game at all through two games we did finally see a couple of downfield passes late in the game of the second game to noah brown yeah. but generally speaking and that was a bit of a wrap on Cliff Kingsbury and his offenses. There's been a lot of sideways passing. You also have a young quarterback who's probably not going to be as comfortable throwing downfield right now. So you heard during the broadcast, Mark Slara talking about, you know, baby steps and they're giving Jaden Daniels easier passes. So in some ways it makes some sense, but it is stunning. I just looked at the top 100 receivers right now. Mm -hmm. Yep. In terms of yardage, he's not in the top 100. Right receivers right well, now also, brian robinson has more receiving yards than terry mclaurin on this commander's way more. team eckler yeah. has way more yeah. i mean noah brown flashed a lot more it is surprising that he's not there at the same time i don't expect him to have a big year i never expect him to have a big year because you've got a rookie quarterback it's also a small sample size and in the second game against the giants they leaned heavily on the running game so he's, he's just going to – even though he saw more action than he did in week one, if you're rushing for 215 yards like they did in week two, you're not going to have big wide receiver numbers across the board. So he kind of suffers from that I, as well. I think his role will expand and grow as Jaden gets more comfortable, as Cliff starts dialing up some longer shots as we get deeper into the season. It's, it's certainly game plan related, but – I wonder if defenses are going, all right, let's just take him. Let's just try and take him out of the game a I'm little sure bit. I'm sure that's part of it. And limit where he's catching the ball right. and how far he's going to go once he catches mm -hmm. it, yard after the catch, right? Because, I mean, <laughs> 12 targets and eight catches in two games for your number one receiver um, for 39 yards, that ain't good. That's not said. Great. And so I would say this. Defenses have a lot to do with it. That's mm -hmm. why guys like Eckler are wide open underneath. Ertz has been open. Maybe now Noah Brown gets a lot more targets. But your number one target in the receiving core has to have more than eight catches. All that said, if Jaden Daniels hits him on that go to start the second half yep. of the opener, yep. we're talking about a totally different yardage total. Yeah, well, it's a 70-yard touchdown. He, he's scoring. Yeah. As a, like, I don't think that he's lost his skills. No. I think it's more towards well, what you said. That's why I'm not alarmed. Yeah, I think it's more towards what Jason is saying is, if I'm a defense, look, I don't I'm know. I'm taking anything, him out. But if I'm a defensive coordinator, I'm going to go, all right, who do I have to face? I'm making Zach beat uh, me. I got to face Terry McLaurin and then a bunch of guys. It, all right. It, it was nice what Noah Brown did, but at wide receiver, I'm not scared of any of them except for one guy. So I'm going to try and limit, obviously. I'll tell you who's not going to beat and, me. And, and that's why I think they threw the sideways passes to him in this game because they wanted to feed him and get him, you know, touching the right. ball and hopefully in As rhythm. As you should. But that's why guys like Eckler. And Ertz are going to – if Ertz stays on the field for most – they're going to have a ton of catches. But mm -hmm. it's also a combination of factors, including, which you haven't mentioned yet, the less than stellar offensive line. They've done a fine job, but partly it's because Jaden's getting rid of the ball like faster than anybody in mm -hmm. football. He's getting rid of the ball in like under 2.2 seconds. I think he was even faster in week two or he was a tick off it. I and mean, it, it, he is getting rid of the ball – fast and part of it is because they don't want to uh, necessarily expose him and have him throwing all these tight window throws early on but it's also because the offensive line ain't great it's also going to be game plan and game flow dependent look at their, their next opponents the Bengals. they're going on the road for monday night football the Bengals have been awful against the run in their first two games they allowed ramondre stevenson to go nuts on them in week one we, we saw that firsthand. We lose our survivor pick. Mm -hmm. And then this past weekend, the Chiefs rolled up a bunch of yards on them too. So if you're Kingsbury and Quinn and you want to you want to stay in this game, they're Keep probably, the the probably going to be heavy rush in this game as well. So you might not well, you might not see that Terry McLaurin expansion of him, you know, going downfield more uh, until 
week four or five, six. I don't think you're gonna I don't think you're gonna see it this weekend. I wouldn't dismiss though the addition of Brown. He is uh, a different he has a different skill set good piece. Than, uh, than the other receivers on that team. And I I think you notice an immediate impact and I don't expect it to be a one off. I like him more than the other guys. But there's a reason he was let go by the Houston Texans. He's not a premier wide receiver. They're going to play the Bengals next on Monday Night Football. Right. Now, T. Higgins may not play, but what the commanders eventually need to do, and they're in a rebuild, is they need to add either a number one receiver, so Terry becomes the number two, or a yep. 1B receiver. You see that in Cincinnati. They've got Jamar Chase, but T. Higgins is really good. It's fantastic. T. Higgins wanted $20 million this offseason. There's a reason why the successful teams generally have two really good receivers. Jason's a Niners fan. Mm -hmm. The Niners, okay, they take a hit because Debo's hurt right now, but it's Debo and Ayuk. And mm -hmm. they've got Kittle, and they've right. got McCaffrey. These are premier game Adam Peters game, knows that. He, game, knows, he, knows, game record. Well, he, he knows. knows Noah Brown isn't a superstar. But he's I, not going I, into next year with those receivers. I agree with EB in that he's he's a decent piece. Now, he, he may have been expendable for the Texans because they've got – Dell Diggs and Nico Collins, who's a superstar at this point. Yeah, but is he usable here? Absolutely. Oh no, no. And if you look at what his production was last year, it's yeah. way more and he's than big. what these other guys have he's, done. He's like six two, two twenty. Right. He's, he's got a, a different skill set than a lot of these guys They're, on the roster. He's going to have a big, significant role. No, and he's going to have to step up to take away some of the attention that all these defenses are going to have the attention towards Terry McLaurin. But I'll tell you this. This game on Monday night, you know, the Bengals are desperate. Oh, yeah, they are. Oh, yeah. And Chase is pissed. All right? You saw that this past week against But Kansas he's pissed City. also at his organization. I know. He's just pissed all the way around. Um, and, you know, Burrow, if he's not pressured, man, he's going to kill you. So the lack of edge rushing from Washington this past yeah. couple weeks, I think it's going to kill him because Burrow is going to sit back there and Chase is going to be open. They're going to get Chase open whenever they want. Yeah. And they got Moss. They got Chase Brown. They got some guys that can hurt you. And Gasicki really played well this past week. So I, I, if you're not getting pressure, and I don't know if Joe Witt's going to start sending guys after Burrow, but if you're not going to get pressure on him, he's going to and kill you. And in the absence of T. Higgins, they've had guys like Yoshi Voss caught two short touchdowns this past weekend. Yep. Jermaine Burton, the rookie speedster out of Alabama. He, he finally like a, got – He had like a 40-yard catch yep. coming into this uh, – I think it was like the first play of the second half for them against the Chiefs. So they've had guys – stepping in with Higgins sidelined with the hamstring. So it's not just the Jamar Chase show. They have some other pieces that, that Burrow can lean on there. No, it's a big test. Joe Witt said this week that he's got to be better. I agree. He's got to be better. And frankly, I thought through half of the first half of that game last week, uh, or, you know, through the first half, that Kingsbury needed to be better. Right. And I thought he was. He got a little more creative. He opened yeah. it up in the second half. he opened half. it up. And maybe it's the grand plan, yep. you know, start slowly. And maybe that's what he's going to try to do in many of these games is lull them to sleep and then hit them for the big plays later. Uh, but you, we need some more big plays early on. And I agree with Jason. Witt's got to dial up more pressure. Yeah. Because he's got to send guys the corners throw. aren't going to hold up, especially with Forbes out. I mean, it, it's kind of laughable to say that at this point because Forbes hasn't necessarily distinguished himself. But it just makes you one less guy, one less qualified guy on paper out there. Um, you saw how bad Mike Davis was. He was terrible. They, they had yeah. to shut him down. <laughs> he had to so, be benched. I mean, they're thin to begin with. Yeah. So, if I'm Zach Taylor, I am targeting Jamar Chase 15 times easily. minimum. Maybe 20. Minimum. Especially if Higgins isn't there, he gets was 18 close to, to that, 20 right? targets. He was 18. Yeah. Malik yeah. Neighbors had a 67% target share yep. against the Commanders. That is an absurd number. And to bring it back to like Terry McLaurin. If guys McLaurin, get in like 30% is a, is a big number. He was at nearly 70%. To bring it back to Terry McLaurin, I think that they're going to make some adjustments. And Terry will be more involved. He's not going to have uh, 40 yards receiving every two games, which is what he did in the first two you games. You wouldn't think. Well, if they keep throwing him these little bubble screens, whatever you want to he call them, he will have but the same thing. But he'll be able to. And I think I think you started to see Jaden getting more comfortable throwing the ball downfield in the second half. Um, and I think they're going to lean into that more. Like, they've babied him a little bit, I think, with a lot of these sideways passes. But they didn't draft him number two to be a guy who's just throwing wide receiver screens. No. He has a good arm. He's shown that at, 
he's shown that at times. They haven't really thrown many downfield balls, but I think you started to see that, and you're going to see more and of it. And Terry ultimately get involved. Look, he's not washed. No, he was open on that bomb in the first game. Of course. If he hits it, it's a totally different That's story. That's why I'm not concerned. If this continues, I don't think it will for much longer, but if this lack of production continues, lack of targeting, he has to have a little diva. He has to channel a little bit of Stefan Diggs hmm. and go into Kings. I don't think he has that in him. I don't think he does, but he's no, he would to go to the coaches. Then he'll, just he have to to act, the coaches. then he'll have to be a good actor and go yeah. to the coaching staff and say, you got to get me involved more. This is this is outrageous. I have to be more a part of the game plan. He, I think he, that's he, why they threw the wide receiver screens because they, they looked at sure. the first game and like, we got to get him involved, and then, then they just threw the little right. dump-offs and they just didn't work out. Right. I wouldn't be concerned about – Terry McLaurin, I would just be concerned about the execution or lack thereof. Right. Because if you're <laughs> – he could be open and maybe J.D. just doesn't see him. Mm -hmm. um, and then the overthrow in the, in the first game. But Eckler is going to be open the entire season when he's on the field. Yeah. Uh, because I think defenses are taking McLaurin away. Well, I think Ertz has proven he's going to be open too he, he, until sure. until proven otherwise. Yeah. Utilize that too. I, again, I like, I like our weapons. <laughs> <laughs> They're not great. They're not elite. But they're good enough to get open. They're good enough to score points. By the way, I have more concerns about our defense. On a side note, do you guys like the double dip Monday night football in week three? I always like double dipping. Yeah, you got sure. the, the first game's Jags at the Bills. That's 730 on ESPN. Mm -hmm. And then Commanders at the Bengals. That's 815 I, 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 on the mothership. I don't like how they stagger that. I think that's weird. Kind of like it. Yeah, because then, what, you're watching a half hour one, and then you can switch to the other. Well, I'll just have both. I'll have a side screen up. I'll, I'll yeah. be honest. It's better than watching Monday Night Countdown for three hours. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> Gross. Yeah. To watch Jason Kelsey dancing around. <laughs> yeah, I'm done Drab with that. said he had a take ready to go to talk yeah, about Jason Kelsey. Scorching hot take. Him. Is he getting over there? You <laughs> you know what? We can get the drabby take. He's running over to the studios. I think they've got a camera on oh, him. Oh, they do. Oh, they, are we going to go to the oh, – Drabby oh. seemed passionate. I mean, this was just from a tweet that I saw. Cue up I Studio 2. Jason Kelsey. It was dance. just a, a mini tweet last night. I was so annoyed. <laughs> I don't know how Jason Kelsey got shoved down our throats. He's an <laughs> offensive line. He's a center. The worst person on the offensive line that nobody cares about. I tweeted, I don't want to know what my offensive linemen look like. I don't know what any Seahawk offensive <laughs> linemen look like. Why is this guy – I like – Travis Kelsey, I get he scores touchdowns. Offensive lineman it should he be used to score seen touchdowns. and not heard. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I well, it's been two weeks. I just don't I, care about Jason Kelsey. I, I think he's mostly right there. Like, do you know what Tristan Wirfs looks like? He's supposedly not the best really. offensive I, lineman in I the game. I couldn't believe how ugly Cosby was when he signed his contract. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't believe it. So, yeah, I mean, for I the mean, most I know part, what Trent Williams looks like because he's been here. He was here forever sure, before sure. he went to San Francisco. Yeah. But generally speaking, even the best offensive lineman, who they say Tristan Wirfs is one of them. I couldn't pick him well, out of the Well, all I know is they kept doing the push-push last night, right? And right. they appeared to be pretty successful without him. So maybe it wasn't even that great. <laughs> Most teams are successful with the tush-push, EB. Yeah. It's when you go for a half yard. You're supposed to be able to get a half yard. Yeah, but I was told it was only because they had Kelsey. No. Apparently not. Yeah. Can we, can we get someone lives on. on Monday Night Football who doesn't just do bits the entire time? <laughs> can we get some uh, like a real person on there? We went from RG3 racing Eagles they, on the field to Jason Kelsey doing his dump dance every two minutes. <laughs> well, they then also it. he doesn't have to conform to – everybody else is wearing a suit. Yeah. And he's got like chains and chest yeah, hair sticking well, 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 that was the Fitz Part bit. of the brand. What happened to Fitz? He's on well, Amazon. He's on yeah, come on. He's on a yeah. different platform. Oh. He's wearing Hawaiian shirts every week. What was Ryan Clark? I can't keep track. What was Ryan Clark? wearing last night. I don't know. That was weird.